In this video, we have our patch 5.12 agents tier list. What's going on guys, it's your host Sergeant Frost and welcome back to another video. As we all know, the previous patch was huge and the effects it had on the meta were interesting to say the least. Needless to say, it's time for an updated playlist. Topping the duelist in the S tier, we have Valorant's poster girl Jet. Jet's one of those agents that entered the meta once and has refused to leave ever since. And the reason she's here and not the other duelist is mainly because she's just so good on every single map. In reality, there's not a single map where Jet feels weak, whereas most agents have at least some maps where picking them feels slightly questionable. And it's not like she's just good on those maps either. In many of them, she's simply the go-to pick. Her smoke dash is lethal and easy to use pretty much everywhere, and it always gets massive value as long as you do it right. She gets a free gun on her ultimate, which really helps out her economy, and that's even more valuable considering she's still an awping menace because of her dash and updraft freedom. The only flaw you can recognize in Jet is that she lacks flashes, but what she gets in return is so much more valuable. Second on today's list, the most insta-locked agent in the game, Reyna, and she's in B tier. Why is Reyna there, some players might ask? I always see her stomping my games when a smurf gets her. Well, yeah, that's the problem with this agent. Reyna isn't fundamentally strong, but she is a smurf agent. Her main caveat is that if you're good enough, she's great for getting value from her kill-heavy snowball inclined kit. With each kill she gets, she can either heal or get out depending on what's better at the time. The higher you go in elos, the worse it gets. If you're having a bad day in ranked, you're going to get zero value from her since her kit doesn't bring much utility or overall value to a team. And that's not to say that she's useless there. I mean, even in Radiant, she sees a lot of play. But the reality is, is that if you want to play Reyna, you have to be better than your opponents to get consistent value and justify picking her over a meta agent. The even bigger reality is, is that she's not terrible, but she offers very little and is susceptible to falling off completely when she's having a bad game. I mean, there's a reason your insta-lock Reyna either goes 2 and 19 or 34 and 8. There's just no in between. Then we have Raze, and she's in the A tier. Raze is one of the strongest picks in the meta right now, especially on the maps that suit her. But she's not quite at the level of Jet. Her aggressive movement offers more options, but she's also more vulnerable using them, and double blast packing can oftentimes be a bit clumsy, especially when she doesn't end up in the safety of a cloudburst like Jet would. Overall though, the overwhelming speed at which she can fly around makes her hard to deal with when you don't expect her to be coming. Her grenade and ultimate are also valuable tools that can create pressure on the map simply because of how quickly it can nuke a small area with damage and clear it out for your team. One of her strongest map picks is Bind. The C's nade combo on short U-Haul and Hookah is really good there. Not to mention, Raze is incredibly helpful for taking B because her Boombot can clear out all of Hookah safely, and Fracture works quite well for her too. Everything is quite closed off, and there's a lot of spots her nade can frag out. Don't go picking her on a map like Breeze, but if you like to enjoy a bit of Raze from time to time, there's no shame in doing that on some of her meta maps. Under Raze in the A tier sits Phoenix. The biggest reason for why he's an A tier agent is because of his ease of use as an agent. Phoenix has a low skill floor and a high skill ceiling. He can bring value to anyone, but achieving mastery is still extremely rewarding. His ultimate is his greatest piece of utility he can bring to a team, mainly because it is a low investment scouting, combat, and map pressure tool all in one. The only problem for Phoenix is that unfortunately, as you go up higher in the ranks, he becomes slightly worse. He's good on a map like Pearl because he can farm orbs and get his ultimate quickly, but his lack of movement becomes a problem on maps like Breeze or even Fracture. Then we got Neon, who's unfortunately down all the way in the C tier. Don't get us wrong, Neon's not a bad agent, but she just wasn't really designed for solo queue. Unlike the other duelists, Neon needs a lot more setup from her team, which needless to say is not always easy to come across when you're queuing with 5 randoms. She's insane and super satisfying to watch in pro games on a map like Fracture, but in rank, the sad reality is that you'll probably die like 6 times while sprinting, and lose your team 3 attack rounds by throwing a wall that your teammates had no idea what to do with, and it just feels like you're not really playing a real agent for the remaining 3. Her stun is cool though hard to use, and her ultimate's definitely got its moments, but Neon is just too hard to get value from right now. And then we have Yoru, sadly down in the C tier. Again, not because the agent is overall terrible, but more so that he requires insane dedication and investment to become good at him. If you have like 5 hours on Yoru, chances are you're trolling by picking him. The skill floor on this agent is simply the highest in the game. There's a lot of outplay potential, and his kick can be used in an almost infinite amount of creative ways. The problem is, is that in order to get good at Yoru, and extract the kind of value that he offers when he's played optimally, you'd first have to throw hundreds of games into honing the craft. You can choose to become a Yoru main, and if you do, the C tier rating doesn't apply to you. But for the vast majority of players that aren't god tier Yoru one tricks, he's just too hard to get the same value from as you would with any other duelist. Now before we move on to the initiators, I should mention that if you're really serious about improving, the fastest way to go about that is through our website. We offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, have exclusive courses from the best pros in the scene, and a lot more. Try it out today with just our $8 a month subscription. 
Now for the initiators. We're going to preface this initiator portion of the video by saying that we do not believe there is truly an S tier initiator in the current meta. None of the initiators truly stand out beyond the rest currently, especially since Fade and KO were nerfed a bit over the course of this episode. So we're going to start off the A tier with Fade. Fade is atop the A tier in the initiator class and for good reason. She collects info great at a local level, she doesn't have to stop her flow of combat to use her abilities like Silver Breach and Sky do, and she has great CC tools she can get map control with and deny sights with when she's on defense. Right now, Fade is in a great spot, however she did get changed this patch. Her prowlers got nerfed and last patch her ultimate point cost went up. The good news for Fade is that Cypher is coming back into the meta which means Fade has a reason to be picked to help counter him. Fade prowlers do break and destroy Cypher trips, which makes her a good counter to Cypher when he's defending on sites. For Fade's meta maps, she is preferred on the smaller maps so that her abilities can cover more ground. So Pearl, Bind, and Haven are great for her. Keep in mind, a map like Haven requires lineups for her eyes to be useful though. She is relatively good on maps like Ascent, Fracture, and Icebox too, but she could be swapped out for another, oftentimes better initiator as well here. Next up in the A tier we have Sova. So the good thing about Sova in the current meta is that his drone is incredible for the info gathering game, and his recon dart is easy to get value from. And that value can be multiplied with recon lineups that can spot enemies from positions that they wouldn't expect. His shock darts are quite good in the current meta too, mainly because they can counter sentinel abilities that are going to be coming back into play. Think about how Sova can bounce his shock darts off walls to take out Cypher trips and all of Killjoy's placeable abilities. His best maps currently are the bigger maps, so Breeze, Haven, Icebox, and Ascent. Strictly because of how good his drone is at clearing large areas, and the fact that he can shoot his arrow to get info at ranges where Fade is just useless. Then in the B tier we have the CC aficionado Breach. The good thing about Breach in the current meta is that he is the best agent on Fracture hands down. But then again, that's basically the only map where you'd pick him. He's not bad on maps like Haven and Ascent, but he's probably not the ideal first pick initiator you'd want there either. The best part about Breach is how effective his CC abilities are at incapacitating the enemies. Funny enough, his CC abilities are also one of his biggest problems, because he can hurt his teammates just as much as his enemies with misplaced or miscommunicated abilities. If you don't have a mic or you lack communication skills, don't even think about picking Breach. You need to be calming a lot more than anyone else on your team while you're playing him, simply so that you don't screw over a teammate when you go to use one of your abilities. In all honesty, he would be up in the A tier if it wasn't for the fact that he's very hard to get value from in a solo queue environment due to the lack of vocal communication and ranked. Sky's in a bit of a weird spot in the meta. She's a good agent, but she feels mad to play. She's not as good as any other initiator in terms of doing one special job well, whether it be info gathering, skirmishing, site denial, or going for map control. She doesn't really excel in any of these things anymore. On every other map, there's an initiator that outshines her. She's a good option for a second initiator, but so is KO, and it's hard to justify picking her over KO on a lot of maps. The one bright spot for her though is that her heal is still the single best healing ability in the game even after Sage's heal rework this patch. We have a similar situation to the initiators for this patch where we believe that after the chamber nerfs, there isn't a true sentinel that stands out and deserves an S tier spot. But we will start off with the rating that you probably didn't expect, and that's Cypher in the A tier. Cypher is up big right now and for two good reasons. The first reason is that now that Chamber has been nuked with nerfs, most of the community at large will drop in from their agent pools, which frees up some room for Cypher to come back into the meta and see a more significant rise in his pick rate. The second reason is that now that Cypher has been buffed, and he has been long gone from the meta previously, people don't know how to play against him anymore. Now that his trips are longer, there's new options out there that most of the community have never seen before in terms of Cypher trip placement. Cypher's biggest weakness normally is that he's predictable. Right now, he's not more than ever. On top of that, he's great on bigger maps where Killjoy really struggles. When the previous patch released, and maybe even by the time we upload this video still, Cypher is basically S tier. But once people relearn to play against him in his new trips, he will eventually sink back down to as low as B tier, so we'll put him in the A tier for now. So similarly to Cypher's situation now that Chamber is officially gone from being the best Sentinel, Killjoy now has more room to shine and find her place in the meta again. People tend to forget that she was the premier Sentinel before Chamber came out, but now that he's gone, she has the capability to return back to the meta spotlight. Something to note that is a positive for her is that her ultimate won't get countered as hard anymore, especially on a map like Fracture where we might see her return. To elaborate, Breach's C doesn't work and Sova needs overall 3 shots of his ultimate to take it out, which basically means that it's become an ultimate for an ultimate again. Last up in the A tier of this patch is Sage. The best part about Sage is that she is always the comfort pick for most players. She also is known to be a safe pick for solo queue because of how useful her heals and revive and her wall is in certain situations. Her ultimate has great potential, but it's also weird. What we mean by that is that people dying in unresable positions, Brimstone and Sova camping her res with her ultimates in an effort to counter her revive attempt, and so on and so on. For her meta map, she is still meta on Icebox, 
mainly because she is still needed to plant on B on attack, and her wall on tube is very useful now that you may not have a chamber trap anymore. Her wall can also be used in other places on defense to great effect like walling off B from attackers, or saving your wall in general for retake so that you can seal attackers off that decide to play post plant off site. Sage is also good on Pearl. She's good for planting on B and her wall is strong for walling off art connectors on attack. And on defense, she can wall A main or art and play somewhere else temporarily to start off the round. And for her last good map, she is a good pick on split because of her wall in mid. Welp, it finally happened. The Frenchman boy wonder that dominated the Valorant meta for an entire calendar year has finally been dethroned. So what's the deal with him now that he's a shell of his former self? Well, one good thing is that on the attacking side of maps, he's slightly better because you can put your anchor inside of a main and then TP back while running out. This just helps him feel less clumsy when he's trying to make a quick getaway on attack. Now, how will his play be changed due to his nerfs? His trip having a range on it now means that he can't hold flanks as well as he used to, which means you're going to have to place it closer just like Kildra's abilities if you want it to be an active flank watch tool now. His teleport is worse on defense because he lost the big range his dual anchors had, where he could play aggressive and then TP far away to safety which made him a big threat for aggressive pushes on defense. And finally his ultimate got nerfed too, but it's still a free AWP at the end of the day. Just because it's no longer disgustingly broken doesn't mean it's weak or not worth using on eco rounds when you should be saving with your team. For our last class of the video, let's start off the S tier of the controllers with Viper. So how's Viper doing in the meta? She is in general a good agent, but on her meta map, she is a must pick, which gives her high value in the current map pool meta. To go more in depth on the point that she's great on Icebox, she can defend both A and B sites well. And her wall is a great tool for attacking B and planting on B site if your team doesn't run a Sage. She's great on Pearl because her wall blocks vision well on the B side of the map. She is obviously a must pick on Breeze due to the large size of the map. She's solid on Fracture as well, where she blocks vision well on attack with her wall. And her smoke orb and ultimate make her great at defending the small sites when she's on defense. On split, she's great at stalling with her abilities. No attacking team wants to walk out of her smoke on this map when she's placed her smoke orb in a choke point. Something to note is that it may be beneficial to run a second controller on split alongside her just for smoke coverage. And finally, something to know about her kit due to recent changes, her ultimate got nerfed a lot, but it's not why she's a must pick. Though you will have to play more purposefully around your ultimate now, and you can't just leave it without thinking anymore. Omen sits in the A tier because he is overall a rock solid smoke pick in the current meta, and he can be played on any map in the current map pool with the only exception being Breeze, and that's since Viper is the must pick for that map. Breeze is leaving next episode, so Omen's priority will shoot up even more in the meta because of it. Omen does have one of the best team-based flashes in the game, which means playing off this ability makes for great pushes both on attack and defense. He has one ways no other agent can throw with his smokes too. Shadow Step allows him to take good unexpected angles on defense and post plants. And finally, his Shadow Step occasionally helps you get out of angles that you would have otherwise costed you your life. Brim is in an okay spot in the meta. One thing he has going for him is that he still has the longest lasting smokes in the game currently. His Molly is great for post plants since it is long lasting and it has fast tick rate damage. His Stim Beacon makes him a great attacking controller to assist his team on rushes. One downside to his kit is that he is a bit telegraphed as a smoker because of the nature in which he puts down his smokes. Because of his local nature, he's best on maps like Fracture and Bind, but unfortunately for him, the latter is leaving very soon. For Astra, her strongest point is that she's really good on Pearl, which puts her in B tier. Her sucks and stuns are great for sight denial when she's on defense. Plus, her utility is fairly self-explanatory and does a great job of clearing angles. On Pearl in particular though, her ultimate makes attacking on B-Sight so much easier as long as you know where to place it, and even in retake scenarios, it's very strong. She's okay on Haven too, but she hasn't really been herself ever since her nerfs. Welp, Harbor needs some help in the meta still, even despite the attention he's been getting from the devs. It's hard to understand why he's the odd man out in the controller role right now, but we believe his problems revolve around the fact that he has too many smokes and doesn't have any overpowered factors other than his ultimate. Viper's got mollies that deal double damage, and all of her utility decays by just standing in it. Brim has an insane Molotov and a speed boost that no other agent provides. Omen's got an insane flash, and Astra does not only have stuns but also has displacement. Harbor has a smoke, another smoke, and on top of that, another smoke. Two of his three smokes slow his own teammates too, and that one smoke that doesn't can be shot down with half a clip, so that it dissipates unpredictably for anyone standing in it. His one saving grace is his ultimate, but if that's why you're picking him, you should probably wonder why if it's worth throwing the first four rounds first, just so that you can have some real abilities for that one round. And with that being said, that's our 5.12 agent tier list. Let us know whether you agree or disagree in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe. This has been your host, Sergeant Frost, and I'll see you all again in the next one.